we have usually two uh, PowerPoint file. If I am able to do it all together, it is nice. If not, then we will extend it to the next class. I hope I can do it because some students requested some uh, slower explanation because I am explaining a little bit faster. And I will speak a little bit slowly and let you to get some notes if you want. Okay. I suppose you already exercised the last class. Some students probably knew here, but we have already started um, the supply demand application. And of course, the theoretical part is already done in the last class. And today I'm going to give you the equations and finding the equilibrium points. And we will learn when some supply shift or demand shifts realize what will happen to the system, to the equilibrium. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, last class we did this, but I'm going to refresh you a little bit more. Equilibrium, as you are understanding, is the point where the supply and demand curves intersect each other. And this has meant the market is in the equilibrium. We have the equilibrium price and we have the equilibrium quantity. And at that point, we have, uh, you want me to speak slowly, because some students are requesting me to speak slowly, because you will sometimes requiring to get some uh, uh, notes. Uh, due to this reason, uh, I will speak a little bit slowly to help you. But as I said to you, this is in the system and you will be able to download and uh, follow it from the uh, videos. Equilibrium is defined as a state of rest, a situation that one achieved will not change unless some external factors previously held constant or changes. Of course, this is uh, somehow not very clearly introduced to you, but equilibrium is said to be in equilibrium where the market price and market quantity is in the balance. Therefore, we have to uh, realize the equilibrium is the preferable point where we are having the desired market price and we have the quantity which is uh, guaranteed from the consumers and from the suppliers. And we are all in the economy trying to reach to these equilibrium points. If the market is below, it is supposed to be there is some scarcity in the market. And if it is above the equilibrium, it is supposed to be there is overproduction or surplus in the system and excess quantity which is produced and not sold in the system. Therefore, it is always desired to have this supplied quantity at equilibrium level. Most economies working below the equilibrium and always trying to reach to the equilibrium. And some other developed economies sometimes exercising overproduction and uh, excess the equilibrium points. And due to this reason, there are some intervention to the market for preventing or reducing this surplus from the system. Due to this reason, quantity supplied and quantity demanded in the market is supposed to be equal when the balance or equilibrium point is realized. Let's schedule this on the graphic. We have here, of course, numerical now. We are going to calculate the equilibrium and we want to know how the equilibrium is realizing the system and what is the mean of this equilibrium for the economy. As you see, we have the demand curve here, which is inversely proportional between quantity and price. As you see from graphically, you are observing there is negative slope on this curve because as much as you are increasing 
the quantity, it is expected the price will go down. And similarly, as much as you are shifting the price up, the quantity demanded is supposed to be reduced because demand or consumer utility is dependent to the price. We are not happily enjoy to buy when something is expensive. And due to this reason, we are trying to uh, increase our welfare and our utility with this uh, lower prices. And at zero price, where there is no price, we are maximum. We are in the maximum utility and we have the maximum quantity for shop. And if it is the highest price where it is near three point at this graphic, then this means no consumer will prefer to buy any X quantity of this product, which is hamburger is given. And when we are putting the supply curve on this curve, on this graphic, you are observing supply curve is proportional between price and quantity. When the price goes up, it is good for the producer because producers are profit oriented. As much as the price goes up, producers enjoy and increase their production. This is good for them because they are increasing their profit and they are enlarging their market. And this is good. The upper part of this curve is the producer welfare, also called producer gain. Above this line, this supply line, is the surplus, is the producer gain. And when you look to the demand curve where it is negatively sloped, it is, of course, this triangle, this, red, uh, uh, this right angle triangle is the welfare for the consumers. And as much as we are increasing the price, this welfare is supposed to be reduced. Is it Yes. Okay. Is, is yes. this okay? Is it okay this much uh, fast speaking or uh, transferring you? Is that okay or you have to, uh, you, do you want me to speak slowly or is it okay? It's okay. Okay. Let's, let's look the given numbers now. We have two points here indicated. One is below the equilibrium and the other one is above. And of course, the equilibrium is the way intersection of this supply and demand curve. As you are observing here, the point where it is 3,333 units produced is lower production and there is some scarcity in the market because there is more demand. As you are observing, if you are going, if you are extending this uh, price line where it is one unit towards to the demand curve, we have some scarcity between these two points. As you are observing, it is somehow 6,666.66 is the, the desired uh, amount for the consumers is going to be bought. But as you see here, there is 3,333.33 unit of hamburger produced in the market. Therefore, uh, the differences between these two is the scarcity in the market. Either this is going to be imported from foreigners for covering this need from the consumers, or it will enlarge and increase the production capacity of the producers if it is available, if the capacity is possible to increase and enlarge the market towards to the equilibrium. Let's see how it is going to be realize. As it is given here, there is the price, the quantity supplied and quantity demand introduced on this table. And at point 0.3, there is 1000 unit produced and of course 9800 unit 
is demanded. As you see, when the price is lower, the amount which is demanded is very high. And if the price goes to 0.60, then the quantity demanded is decreasing to 8,600, but the quantity supplied is, of course, increasing because since the producers are profit-oriented, this is then, of course, good for the producers and shifting the quantity supplied from 1,000 to 2,000. And when the price goes 90 or 0 0.90 cent or let's say unit, then the quantity supplied now is not 4,000, but it is 3,000. But the quantity demanded is 7,400. As you are observing, this is somehow showing us demand is decreasing function of the price and quantity supplied is increasing function of the price. Therefore, it is of course not proportionally increased as much as the price is increasing, but it is somehow decreasing amount of increase realized for the supply and decreasing amount of, of course, reduction realized for the demand also because of this productivity problem. Productivity, which we are going to exercise in the following chapters, means the performance of the producers per unit, per capita, per labor or employee capacity to produce something. Because if it is supposed to be every employee's performance unique and same, let's say, then it should be realized proportionally. If the price goes from 0.3 to 0.6, it is expected to 2,000. And when the price goes to 0.90, of course, it should be double it from 2,000 to 4,000 4, and then from 4,000 to 8,000. This is somehow realized because of the performance of the producers, which is not equal. Every producer has his own or her own performance and productivity. And due to this reason, quantity produced is decreasing amount increase. This is then diminishing, uh, of course, productivity. Therefore, we are going to exercise these things more carefully in the following chapters. But now let's concentrate to the supply and demand equations and let's find the uh, equilibrium points and see how it is going to be reacting when the excess demand or supply is happened in the market. Up to now is clear, I think. Then let's go to the graphical illustration back. We have here 1.5 price where the equilibrium is intersect as you are seeing on the graphic. 1.5 is the intersection point and at that point we have 5,000 units produced and of course demanded in the market. This is the equilibrium. After this price where it is going to be increased from 1.8 to 2.10 to 2.4 and 2.5, every increase on the price is increasing the supply unit of production but decreasing amount of the quantity demanded and as you are observing from 5000 to 6000 the demand capacity decreasing from 5000 to 3800 and from 6000 to 7000 unit which is supplied is reducing the demand capacity from 3800 3800 to 2600 because the price is increasing. And as much as the price is increasing, the purchasing capacity of the consumers is decreasing. The purchasing performance is decreasing. Of course, this is positively affecting the producer because producer, as I said to you, is profit oriented. And as much as price moves up or goes up, it is good for the producers, the prices, always positively affecting the supplier, but negatively affecting the demand, also called the consumers. And at point 
there is 9,000 units produced, but unfortunately, unfortunately, only 200 units is demanded. Therefore, this is not good for the system. We have to find the equilibrium and we have to find the, of course, sustainable model for maintaining this uh, uh, equilibrium point because it is not easy always to balance this economy at that point because on the one side there is producers where they are producing and introducing their product or promoting their product to the market and they are trying to become more profit oriented and become more profit from this uh, production but on the other side there is the quantity which is going to be demanded from the consumers is depending to the lower prices and as much as this uh, price is going to be estimated in the market and not from the suppliers and not from the uh, demander easily there is as in the classical economical approach i mentioned before invisible hand which is affecting and balancing this market price because producer price and consumer price is not always fixing each other Therefore, supply and demand capacity, fixing and estimating and balancing this price and, of course, the production. If it is too much higher fixed the price, there is lower demand and there is, of course, probably a promotion for the supplier, for the producer to increase and enlarge their production because the higher prices always increasing the production capacity. But at the end of the day, as it is indicated on the graphic, it is not good for the economy. This is reducing and, of course, uh, creating problem to the economy because on the one side, increasing production will damage the balance of this economy and, of course, equilibrium and reduce this, uh, of course, economical performance of the producers because nobody will buy this product at that price and at that quantity. And this means either they are going to reduce their production for the next season, or they are going to export destinations or other uh, countries. And this is, of course, not easily balancing the economy and always some problems, some recessionary periods exercising. We are exercising in the economy and we are having always problems due to this production problem, of course, and demand capacity. And this is the most important part of the economy because we have to find a sustainable model for the economy, at least for this simplest model, for creating the market structure at least equilibrium or uh, at least uh, towards to the equilibrium. Excess supply and excess demand, we want to know what will happen to the economy. Excess supply, at a given price, the excess of the quantity supplied over the quantity demand is called excess supply, as I mentioned to you, Whenever the supply capacity or produced goods and services excessively in the market and excess the demand, this is overproduction, this is surplus, and this is excess supply. And this is not good for the economy. We have to find some solution for this excess supply. Either we are going to export it or we are going to intervene to the market as a government and store this excessive supply in the market and distribute it when there is a lower production or there is a scarcity in the market. This is how it is realized for balancing the price mechanism. Because if there is an excess supply, this will reduce the price mechanism. And if there is scarcity in the market, this will then boost and of course increase the prices. And this is of course inflation. Rise of the general price is inflation, and this is not good for the economy. Therefore, we have to find the reasonable economical model for balancing the economy. And if this is not realized, I mentioned to you, there is always problem, and this is not good for the economy. Excess supply means when the quantity supplied multiplied with the price and subtracting this quantity from quantity demanded, which is multiplied with this price, and there is surplus at that uh, calculation, with this calculation, 
this means there is overproduction. There is something much in the market, and this should be balanced. Therefore, it is better to have always equilibrium or having always zero when these two quantity supplied, which is multiplied with the price, minus quantity demanded, which is multiplied with the price, should be equal to the zero or at least lower level or negative, then this then give the boost to the producer for increasing the production. But if there is higher production and lower demand, then this means producer should stop or should reduce their production in the market. Let's look again to this given excess supply in the market where it is located at price 2.10 where the supplied quantity or produced quantity in the market is 7,000 and demand is 2,600. When you are multiplying each of these, 7,000 multiplied 2.10 minus 7,000, sorry, 2,600 multiplied 2.10 will give you a positive number, will give you a positive amount which indicates there is a surplus in the system and this is not good for the economy. So we have to find something to reduce this supply from the system. Either you are going to distribute to the, uh, 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 let's say, poorer countries, poverty nations, because overproduction is not good for the economy. As I mentioned to you, this will cause too much to the price mechanism, to the price, to the economy as a whole, because when the price reduce or increase, it is affecting the whole other parameters, which we are going to exercise in the following classes. Therefore, this overproduction should be exported to the other destinations, to the other countries, or should be reduced or should be um, uh, bought from the, by the government and stored in uh, places for the next season if there is any scarcity in the market for distributing again to the market for balancing the economy because these kind of difficulties creating always problem to the economy as I mentioned to you. At a price as I mentioned to you 2.10 excess supply is going to be calculated and as you see here 7000 minus 2.600 or 2,600 is the excess supply where 400, 4,400 unit excessive production realized in the market. When you are multiplying this with the price, with the given price, 2.10 is around 9,000 unit or dollar or reserve is, should, is of course, surplus in the economy is excessive and this should be reduced in the system which is not good for the economy and when we are looking here if there is now uh, something as you are observing because of the demand capacity where the price is 1.20 and it is below the equilibrium now there is something different and this is then of course yes please yes I said at this point, sir, I think yes. there will be a shortage. There will be a? a shortage. There is more demand, of course, at that point. Now we don't have surplus, but we have some scarcity, isn't it? Yes. Yes. As I mean, as, I, as it is written, there is more demand now, but this is also excessive, isn't it? There is excessive demand. And this is also not good for the economies. Then we have to increase the production now. And as it yes. is indicated, now we have negativities in the calculation because 4,000 units subtracting from 6,200, which is demanded, giving us minus 2,200 units, which is required to be covered in the system. And if you are multiplying this with the given price, 1.2 is around... 2.50, some units is or some reserve is the scarcity in the system and it should be enlarged and increased and of course covered either with the imported products or should be produced domestic uh, producer by domestic producers. 
Excess demand, as I mentioned to you in the given example, at a given price, the excess of the quantity demanded over the quantity supplied is called the excess demand. And excess demand is, of course, is negative. QD multiplied P minus QS multiplied P is now negative, as I have given to you in the former example. And as it is indicated here, you are having here another example, the price 0.92 unit or dollar or euro, and you have 3,000 unit produced, and you have, of course, 7,400 unit demanded. And this is, of course, another problem. We have scarcity now in the system, and we have to do something for covering this 4,400 units, either in the domestic or from the imported units, as I mentioned to you. And as it is given in this example, if the market is in 2.10, this is then, of course, uh, surplus, and this should be reduced. Up to now, I suppose you understand something. Is OK? And the market equilibrium is in equilibrium when the price is such that the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded. It should be equally realized. The quantity supplied and quantity demanded at that price, we are realizing or uh, obtaining or giving us this equilibrium point is better for the market. A market is in equilibrium when the price is such that excess supply equals to excess demand equals to zero. As I mentioned before, there is no surplus, no excess supply, no excess demand in the market. Then this is then, of course, perfectly uh, realized equilibrium and we have the market in equilibrium. No problem now in the market. The price pressure, which I introduced to you uh, very let's say, uh, basically, the quantity demanded in the market exceeds the quantity supplied at a given price. And this is, of course, not good, as I mentioned to you. QD multiplied P is now higher than QS multiplied P. This is not good, and there is excess demand in the market because of the price pressure, which is going to be affecting and changing the market structure. There is excess demand, and it should be increased and enlarged the market up to the or towards to the equilibrium point. At the price will tend to rise because there is more demand. And if something is demanded, as you know, the price is higher. This is something like that when the demand to the diamond is high, try to buy probably, or because it is really founded material and this scarcity put the price very high or if it is iron, which is not uh, really found, which is abundantly in the market, then of course the price is lower. This is somehow realized in the market. If something abundantly in the market, everybody buy and enjoy the market without any problem because there is a sufficient demand and sufficient product in the market. And this then of course, not creating any price pressure to the market to shift the production price higher level because there is sufficient production. This is, of course, realized in the pandemic also in the uh, coronavirus, as you observed, some products which is sub the uh, external or international marketing structure because of this virus, some product become more priced or become more expensive due to this uh, let's say scarcity and after this then of course it is enlarged and of course reduce the price or because of this scarcity some producer reduce their uh, production and results of this the demand capacity affected and of course shift the price to the higher level therefore this kind of pressures affecting and shifting the market to the up and of course not good for the economy because when the price goes up or when the rise of the general price in the market is the inflation and inflation is not good for the economy because it is creating problem. Higher prices reducing demand 
and reduction on demand or scarcity in the market reduce always the market and create some problem to the economy. Due to this reason, we have to maintain sustainable model for maintaining, of course, this kind of uh, market structure where the uh, supply and demand is somehow becomes in equilibrium position. Excess demand and of course excess supply at price pressure. When the prices in the market increased, quantity demanded falls, as I mentioned to you, because there is inverse proportional relationship between market price and quantity demanded. So-called consumers always uh, welfare oriented, utility oriented, and the price is negatively affecting this utility. The welfare of the consumers always negatively affected from this price increase. And quantity supply rises, and until an equilibrium is reached at which quantity demanded equals quantity supply, then we have no problem. Do you have um, any question? Yes. Yes. Sandra. Yes, Sandra. <clears throat> Please, um, from what you said, and I understood, you said when there is an excess supply, yes, we can can export some of the goods, and then the government intervenes. Yes. By buying some of the excess product and storing when there is shortage, and then gives the economy. But now I don't understand the point. We say, for example, if now there is an excess in demand, yes. What, what can we do to solve such situation? If there is excess supply and no demand, low demand. No, if there is yes, if there is excess, you explain for excess supply. Yes. The solutions, what we can do in case if there is excess supply. But now, um, I don't understand for excess demand. If there is an excess demand, what can we do? I said to you, you can, if there is excess demand and lower supply, isn't it? You mean? Yes. If we are in the below yes. in the equilibrium. If we are below in the equilibrium, you mean? We have scarcity in the market. Is that right? Yes. So yes, we sir. have to, because between supply and demand, we have now scarcity, isn't it? We have insufficient or insufficient production, and there is more yes. demand. This, if yes. it is, if this is in the in the season and subjected to the agricultural products, we are not able to increase this production, isn't it? Because agricultural products need some time for producing, or some other manufacturing products. You have to import now this scarcity for preventing price increase. You understand? That's yes, why sir. we have that's why we have international economical relations because we are always trying to balance this market equilibrium, or at least we are trying to reduce this uh, pressure from the demand if there is excess demand and lower supply to balance the economy because sometimes we don't have some products in our market. And we are always having some demand problem, some excessive demand or some scarcity in the supply. And due to this reason, we are not able to produce these products sufficiently. Sometimes it can be oil, for example, gas, which is not in Cyprus available, but in Nigeria is available, isn't it? Then we have to import this sufficiently for covering the needs of the consumers. Similarly, if we have some production in our country, but it is not sufficient, not covering the needs of the consumers, then we have to import it from the other nations for covering the needs of the consumers. But if we have sufficient production and abundant factors in the market, then we are, of course, in the following seasons, increasing the production capacity if we have sufficient resources, capital, and labor and capacity in the market, in the production, in the industry, then we are enlarging the market towards to the equilibrium and enlarging the suppliers' production for covering the needs of the consumers. This is how we are going to solve this problem. You, is that okay? 
Yes, I mean, this, uh, these are the, these are the uh, best possible solutions. There are some others, but this is the most important uh, uh, solutions that we can do. And the process of price rising so that the excess demand falls to zero is called price ratio. Price ratio, ratio is, of course, to balancing the price is becoming very important because if you are going to look to the system where the equilibrium realized and there is some excessive production, the price ratio is not realized here because as you are observing now, we have some problems between supply and demand because there is higher production and lower demand. And this surplus and overproduction should be reduced because we have overproduction, as you are observing here, at point to where the price ratio is not helping hand for balancing the supply and demand in equilibrium. This is the problem. And QD, QSP is higher than QDP, where it means produce good multiplied with price will give us more resources than QD which is multiplied with price. This means there is excessive production, but of course, lower demand in the market and lower resources in the market for covering this excessive supply. This is expected to fall or reduce the price below to the equilibrium. There is actually a elasticity problem in the system also that we are going to exercise in the few next hour. And this then, of course, affected from this circulation. Every deviation or circulation on the market, either price is elastic, sorry, uh, supply is elastic because of the price, or demand is elastic because of the price, is then affecting and changing the market structure, sometimes towards to the equilibrium and sometimes moving away from the equilibrium and this is the problem to the economy we have problem for solving these issues when we are exercising the elasticity then we will be able to understand better to solve these problems in the market but now on we are of course concentrating to this uh, equilibrium and of course we are calculating the equilibrium only and then after this uh, class or next class, we will do the elasticity comprehensively. Then you will understand how it is affecting and changing the supply and, of course, demand when the price moves up or down. As you see, we are desiring the supply and demand equation or equilibrium, but it is not observed in the system. It is now below the equilibrium where the price is now one unit and producer not happily enjoy to produce more because the profit rate probably is very, very low and not helping hand for increasing the production towards the equilibrium. But demand capacity is very high. As you see at point P when is price one unit or one dollar, the consumers Demand is very high, is around 6,600 something. And when it is one unit, the production capacity is very, very low. Therefore, now we are observing there is excessive demand and there is lower production in the system. And this is not good for the economy. We are expecting to shift the price to the higher level if the production is not increased. Therefore, the price will be shifted to the higher level for reducing the desire of consumers to buy this product. Because sometimes we are also giving up to consume some products when the price goes up, isn't it? Even if it is production increase or even if it is not imported, but only existing conditions sometimes shifting the prices to the higher level, which is not good for the economy. We are not happily uh, enjoying to see the higher prices in the market because it is 
bilaterally affecting the producers and consumers and of course the economy towards to the recession because higher prices always creating problem to the economy and it is not good as a whole to the parameters considered in the system. As you see, we are observing here in a given example, the equilibrium price is supposed to be 1.5 dollar or unit when the price is moving to 5,000. Yes, Farah. Yes, I'm not seeing the slide. Yes. The slide, I'm not seeing the slide. You're not seeing the slides, really? Why? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't Probably know. you you didn't open it. You didn't uh, open the share button. Everybody not seeing or only Farah? Are you seeing this? Yeah. Uh, you are seeing. Yeah, we're seeing the previous slide. You can't see the new one. This one. This this this. You don't see this graphic. No, so. I can see this like uh, you can see. Yes, sir. You are able to see or you are not able to see. I'm able to see. I can see you are sofa. able to see. Right. Well, sometimes because of the transfer, if your internet connection is not faster, sometimes it comes slowly. This comes from these problems, I think. This is not from me because some students are able to see and some are not able to see because when I am changing the graphic, when I am changing the slides, the PowerPoints, it is coming to you a little bit later. You understand because of your system, because of your net connection. You understand? I can uh, quit and come again, but this will not help because of this uh, connection, I think. This is not from me because some students are able to see. It should be faster uh, uh, transfers uh, in this uh, server. If there is some problems in the server, sometimes I also exercise these problems, but I don't know how we are going to solve it. I can wait, maybe it comes to you now. You are able to see or you're still not seeing? I'm not, I'm not seeing anything. Only the excess supply, excess demand, excess that's all I'm seeing. I'm not seeing what we're seeing, like the figures and the. I see, but this is not because of me, because of the connection problem, because some students are able to see. Isn't it? Most students, I think, seeing this. Yes? No, I, I wanted to suggest that he, he can see quit from the group and then come back again. Maybe okay. it will be okay. I am. I, I, I might have to quit or he has to quit. No, he has to quit. So, he should just leave and come back to pop up. Okay, quit yeah. and come. Quit and come, then we will see what will happen, okay? Okay. Okay, you are seeing this equilibrium graphic. This supply demand you are seeing. Yes. Okay. With the pink, pink. Yes, 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 with the pink. Now we come to the alge alge algebra analyze or mathematical analyze of supply and demand. Shall I have to wait him? Is back. Yes. Do you want me to wait? Yes, sir. I am hearing somebody's uh, voice. Is there another class or another attendance? I don't know because I don't understand. There are some other. Uh, Let's see how we are going to find the equilibrium. Are you able to follow me now? The mathematical calculation we are putting a little bit is easy. Is that OK? Do you have any question? We are going to find the equilibrium. 
is okay? Shall I have to go on? I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Tell me. So, um, the mathematical calculation is easy, but should in case if you get to give us in the exams and you say we should plot, I usually find it difficult, like what? the number. On the graphic? Yes, to show excess supply, excess demand, because Sometimes you give the numbers, the excess demand, excess supply, we should calculate and then plot yes. on the graph. Yeah, yes. so I find it difficult, like putting the numbers and plotting to show excess demand, excess supply. We will, we will exercise it now, then you will understand probably better. Let's see if it is still difficult, then ask me question to explain it comprehensively, okay? You ask me okay. question, intervene me to explain you better. Because uh, sometimes I am thinking you are understanding and moving further. Therefore, it is better to go step by step as much as you are asking me questions to see where you are crucial point and you critical difficulties realized. Now we are having, as I said to you, the equilibrium equation, supply demand for finding it is easy. Uh, set supply equal to demand and solve for P. We are going to put the equations together and finding the P, so called the price. And then we are substituting the price in the supply and demand for finding the equilibrium quantity. That's all what we are doing. Okay, it's easy. But when there is some shifts, let's see how we are going to solve it. The example demand equation is this one. QD is given, of course, this is an example. QD is equal to 20, 20 units minus 2p where 20 is the intercept, is the constant, minus 2p, and 2 here is the slope of this curve. You are understanding we are having here the linear equation. Is that right? You are understanding? Yes, sir. Okay. Then we plot this graphic. We are going to plot the graphic. This is the graphic. We have the slope negative, and as you see here, it is minus 2. This minus 2 is the slope of this curve, and as I mentioned to you in our former uh, classes, this slope is estimated by dividing the delta P over delta Q, where you are getting these two different points of quantity and two different points of price, so-called differentiation. You are getting the differentiation of each of these and finding the slope for this curve. Is that right? then you get the slope of this curve, which is minus 2. You are understanding? It's clear, I think. Delta P over delta Q will give you the slope, which is minus 2. Therefore, we have here 20, which is the intercept, so-called the 20 units, which is, of course, means we are buying when the price is 0, as it is the intersection to the quantity, and we have the price at the given point is 10 where we are having the quantity zero, which means you give the quantity zero, then you will find the highest price for this product, which is not going to be bought from the or by the consumers. Therefore, we have 10 for the uh, price, we are the highest price, which is not letting the consumers to buy any X product, any quantity, and there is zero, pro zero price and 20 units of quantity, they are the producer, of course, distributing and letting the consumer to buy the highest. This is the graphical illustration. Now, we have here as you are observing some intersections, man, let's go a little bit further. Let's look up to the example for this supply equation. As you see, the supply equation is positively related, and there is, of course, here a negative intercept and negative, uh, of course, constant numbers, which means at that point, producer will not produce this much, and we are expecting to get some price for producing, for being able to produce something. And here again, we have the slope 2, but now it's positive 2, which means delta P over delta Q will give you a positive 
inclination where the four negative four unit is the means where the producer not desiring to produce where is the intercept, which is in the negative part of this graphic and not illustrated. And there is a positive uh, slope, which means two is the slope. When you get this two difference between price and quantity, let's say eight minus six. And when you go into the 10 minus um, eight will give you probably the slope of this curve, which is of course, here is given to, but we don't know which point we are going to take it. Then when we have this intercept here, 8 and 12, you have, you see, 12 divided to 8 will give you also the slope at that point. But we want to know these two equations, solution. We have the demand curve, which is illustrated former, and we are putting this line on this graphic and we have the supply equation which is qs is equal to minus 4 plus 2p and again we are illustrating on the graphic and we have the intercept at that point as you see you are understanding we have now the intercept and uh, of course equilibrium intersection points and how we are going to get these calculations is going to given to you 20 minus 2p is equal to minus 4 plus 2p is going to be equalized, will be in equilibrium when the equilibrium price and equilibrium uh, quantity is going to be asked to you. Then you will have, of course, as you see, the solution for price 6. Did you follow the equation? Is easy. Do you want me to explain you or is clear? You. Yeah. This is simplest uh, uh, solution. You put the intercept to the uh, right side and you put the price to the left side and you are going to solve this regarding to these uh, equations. Yes, Farah. Then we have the price for six. Do you know mathematics sound or is it difficult for you? Do you want me to explain you how it is realized? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You put these two equations each other. You move 20 this intercept and minus 4 to the left side and you put the 2p minus 2p to the right side. You understand Then we have 4p and we have 24, 24, as you see on the fifth line, one, two, three, four, five, fifth line, yes, or sixth line, this 24 is equal to 4p. Up to now is okay because you have to put the other lines. When you put the four to the other side, it is going to be positive from mathematic, uh, in mathematic it is always. So when you put the equations other side, some numbers, it will be negative or it will be positive. If it is positive, it will be negative. If it is negative, it will be positive. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, but the graph is a little bit confusing. Which graphic? The graph, the one you saw earlier. The graph for the equation. Of this? Of the equation. Okay. Uh, really, let, the graph, I didn't really get it. Uh, let me, because I, I have to upload this once again, because there are some... Uh, my 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 uh, slides gone. I am going to upload it again. It is going to open. Up. The last graphic you are talking about, isn't it? Yes, sir. Mm.
This graphic you mean? This. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. This graphic is confused. Is not clear. Yes, sir. Which part is not clear? We put the equations on the line, on the graphic. For the for the demand curve, there is a white line. There is a uh, inverse proportional white line. You see this? Did you get it? Yeah. Yes. Ten ten is the price because you put it to anti when you give Q the zero. You put it 20 minus to the other side, minus 20 divided to minus 2 will give us 10, isn't it? Because minus divided to minus will give you positive number, and it is 10. 20 divided to 2 is 10. This is positive, then you have the intercept for the price. We are okay. finding the price for the demand curve for when, when we are not buying anything, when the highest price is in the market and we don't buy anything. And when we go into the vertical, sorry, horizontal line, we are, of course, we are giving the price zero and the quantity demanded is 20. Then we have the intercept again for the quantity 20 for the demand curve. This is then we are crossing these two lines and finding the demand curve. Is it OK? Yes, sir. Yes. Do you have any question? Any other? No. OK, for the supply side, we are also doing the same. We have QS minus 4 when we are giving the price 0. 2 multiplied 0 for the green green equation. About, uh, orange uh, or you called brown uh, line for the supply curve. We are giving yeah. the... Yes. You have a question? No. Okay. Go on. Okay. QS is equal to minus 4, which is not illustrated on the graphic because minus 4 is on the negative side of the verti horizontal line, isn't it? But yes. when you are coming from this minus 4, you will intercept this probably at 2. And then you are moving towards to the upward position, upward right side position. And when you have... For the price minus four plus two, when you go to the other side, it is going to be four, and you are going to divide it this four to two, it gives you two, then you have the starter price is two again, then you are intersecting this and finding this, as I said to you, minus four and two for the line, then you have this vertical uh, and of course horizontal uh, points for this supply curve, then you are crossing this uh, proportional line on the graphic, then you find the intersection point for the market where it is realized at 0.6 and at 0.8 that we calculated after this uh, graphical illustration. As I showed you here, we have already calculated this, isn't it? We have uh, obtained this price as it is given, P is 6, and on the graphic, 6 is illustrated. You see, the six is illustrated. We, we found it from these equations. We put the equations together for finding the equilibrium price. Is that OK? It's clear. It? Yes, okay. it's clear. Yes, then we have to put this six to the equation any supply or demand for finding the equilibrium quantity. For quantity, supplied or demand, any of this, you can put this six. Let's say we are putting to the um supply curve minus four plus two plus minus four plus two multiplied six is twelve twelve minus uh, four will give you the eight and you have the quantity demanded also quantity produced in the market and you have this in equilibrium is it clear or you can put to the uh, six point to the demand curve 20 minus 2 multiplied P, and P is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 20 minus 12 is 8, and again you are finding the quantity demanded at 6 price. Then you have the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity for this equation. Is it clear? I think you got it. 
sir. Okay, shall I have to go further? Yes, sir. Good. As I said to you, you put this. You're finding the eight as I have solved for you. So solving um, this question. Yes, please. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes. I can't please. see anything. Like nothing is displaying. You can see. Yes. No context on the no context to view. But the, uh, this has happened before also for some students. This is not from me. This is from your system. I don't know why it is so. You can quit and come again. Probably this well, will. Well, I can see you. I can see ah. you. I can see the content. You can see. Yeah, you I can. can see you, but I can see the content. You 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 are seeing the PowerPoints, but you don't see the in 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 how. Content. Yes, I can see the PowerPoint, but I can see you. I can see you, but I can see Myself. the PowerPoint. Yes, I can see you. You can see me, but not the PowerPoints. Yes. Well. I will do it again. I uploaded already, but this is not for me actually. Okay, let me. I quit. I, I look. I leave and I come back. Is everybody same? You are seeing me or you are not seeing me? Are you able to see the powerpoints? We are able to yes, see. Yes, You are seeing. You are seeing. Personally, I'm seeing you, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. I can see the powerpoint. Oh, maybe it's my system. Some students seeing, some students not seeing. This is not from me. I, I quit and come again. Maybe this will help. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I can. Okay. I'm going to upload again. Probably this will then solve. All right. Where's my system slow? Oh, tab gone. Okay. I, I, I quit and come again. Probably you will see now. Okay, probably seeing. Are you able to see? Yes, I can see. Okay, I, I'm going to because something's not able to see, and there. Are... Okay, let me go again to the equation. Is that, is that okay? You are following me? Yes, sir. Okay, I think it comes from the server, not from me, because some students' server not good, probably, or sometimes exercising the old problem with these connections. No, I can see you now. I can see it now. The graphic also? Yes, also. Okay, now we, we were here. I solved the equation for you and we are moving to the last part and then jump to the elasticity. Okay, for solving this problem, as I mentioned to you, you have to do the equilibrium equations and finding the supply and demand intersection points at price and quantity produced and demanded where the market is in the equilibrium. We have no problem up to here, I think. It's clear, I think. This is not difficult, I think, for you. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Okay, these are all we did. Now we were here. Some notes for solving this equation. We get equivalent equations if on both sides of the equality sign we do the following at the same numbers as i said to you which is not necessarily you know mathematically but this is for those who are not familiar to the mathematical or econometrical models or calculations 
subtract the same numbers for solving the problems mathematically, multiply by the same number with zero, and divide it by the same number again, and then compare it with that or what happens when things demand shifts and of course demand of course sometimes shifted to the upper level sometimes shifted to the lower level and we want to know what is going to be in the market if it is increased then of course increases in demand shift to the right will increase the equilibrium price and quantity well you understand shift the demand to the right we are moving to the right. This will then increase the equilibrium price and quantity to the uh, both side and decrease in demand shift to the left, to the left, to the vertical line will decrease the equilibrium price and quantity as well. Therefore, this is the general knowledge for you for understanding when something happens in the market, when demand is increased or when demand is decreasing, what will happen to the market? And let's see this shift on the markets. When the demand is shifted to the upper level, as you see, the price is increased and of course, quantity as well is increasing. And if it is realized, as you see, it is shifted from 6 to 8 and from, let's say, 12 to 15 probably. This is then, of course, shifts the yellow line, the yellow line, the change in demand towards to the upper level, towards to the um, right side is increasing the price and increasing the quantity produced. And if the demand is shifted to the lower level, to the left side, as you see the blue line, it is decreasing the amount of the production and of course decreasing the price level in the market to the lower level. Therefore, decrease on demand will reduce the market and decrease on demand is of course not good for the economy, but increase in demand is good because it is enlarging and increasing the market and of course, the supply to the higher level, as you are observing on the graphic. If you don't have any question, then we go to the supply. Shifts on the supply, if increase in supply shift to the right, will decrease the equilibrium price and increase the equilibrium quantity and decrease in supply shift to the left, will increase the equilibrium price and decrease the equilibrium quantity. Is that right? As it is illustrated graphically, decrease in demand and increase in, sorry, decrease in supply and increase in supply, as you are observing here, increase in supply, shift to the right. Increase in supply, shift to the right. You see, it is enlarging the production, but reducing the amount, but decreasing in supply, it is, of course, reducing the production and shift the price. Therefore, this is how it is realized. As much as the price moves towards to the vertical, to the price, this is reduction, and to the uh, left, it is decreasing. Sorry, probably I uh, informed wrong. If the price towards to the price is approached, the amount produced is decreasing. If move away from the price or from the equilibrium towards to the right, it is increasing and enlarging it. As you are observing, the price is decreasing, but the quantity produced is enlarging. Therefore, this is somehow uh, uh, inversely related between price and quantity when the supply curves shift to the right and shift to the left. And price ceiling is also affecting and changing the market. Price ceiling occurs when some outside force set a price for the market that is below the equilibrium. And when quantity supplied and quantity demanded differ the short side of the market, whichever of the quantity is less will prevail. Let's see on the market price ceiling or high, which means higher because of less supply, increase the price from one to two as it is illustrated on the graphic. As you are observing here, this is then shifts the market to the right side, sorry, to the left side. It is a Q on the market. You see? It is reducing the market. Is there any question? 
quantity demand is more than quantity supply. This is causing problem because there is less supply in the market. This is creating queue in the market. Everybody wants to buy because there is limited products in the market. Therefore, between this price seal, which is shifted from one to two, is increasing the market. As you see, the demand is, of course, reduced and supply is expected to increase in the following future, which is not realized now in the market. And results of this, which is reduce the supply and cause some supply reduction is of course co causing some queue in the market as in the market queuing is the shortage is less uh, production and of course more demand and a black market says we are having a problem in the market yes please do you have question no it's okay i thought maybe that queuing is yes. is the same as the ceiling price. Yes, yes. Price flow. A price flow occurs when some outside force set a price for the market that is above the equilibrium price. And now when the quantity supplied and quantity demanded differ, the short side of the market, whichever of the two quantity is less, will prevail or win. Let's see when this excess supply is now in the market. What is happening? As you see, now there is more supply than demand. Then, of course, excess supply is a problem again in the market, as I mentioned to you, is not good. There is more supply and, of course, less demand. And the results, there is excess supply, of course, unemployment and decrease in demand caused recession and not good for the economy. This is not good for the uh, economical application as a whole when the market is in this direction. Now I stop here and I jump to the next chapter, to the elasticity. I will start you the elasticity, but not go through the whole chapter because we have limited time, around 15 minutes to finish this uh, chapter, and which is not possible. I'm going to... Uh, introduce you the elasticity for starter and then move to the uh, next week. Okay, we will go to the next week for elasticity to exercise the elasticity and I will upload you some uh, assignments for these um, uh, equilibrium problems and shifts in the market. You understand we have some more applications uh, because we are online and we are not able to do uh, as in the classroom. Therefore, I will give you some assignments. I will upload some questions to you again to do it and send it to me as much as you are doing uh, until end of this month with the elasticity. Oh, I will wait to do the elasticity and together all I will give you together next week. If you want me to give you next week, then I will give you next week after you are finishing your assignments that I have given to you. Then you will do these uh, calculations together with the elasticity. Is that right? Okay, let's, okay. let's, I'm going to upload you now, I'm, I will upload you the next chapter. You will understand better. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. What's up there, Simon? Someone wants to meet Simon. When? To when to? Uh, your 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 less your your voice interrupted. You 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 come and go. Tell me. I have started submitting our assignment. Have you seen them? You submitted your assignment. Yes, sir. When? Submitted through your mail. To my mail. Okay, then it will be evaluated. Or you send me today one more, then I will check. But it is better you upload it to the system also, then I will, you will see your results, okay? If you don't upload to the system, I can put your results. Yeah. Of, of submitting the assignment to the system, that's why. You upload it. Yes, but I am waiting until everybody finished. Everybody finished and it, it will be you finish all, then I will evaluate your assignments, okay? Because I don't want to put the numbers 
now on or skip put the solutions you solve you all and then we do it okay we see the results don't worry okay i'm going to refresh you with the market equilibrium because we are in the elasticity elasticity and its applications you see the definition of the market equilibrium as you exercised in our last lecture market equilibrium is a price such that at the price the quantity demanded and supplied are the same therefore demand and supply curve intersect at equilibrium and there is of course equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity now we have another example qd is equal to 500 minus 4p and qs is equal um, 100 minus 100 plus 2p do you want to solve this problem quickly now and uh, send me uh, tell me the answers and i will go through i can give you two minutes to solve this equation for example to see whether you are going to understand or not solve this equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity and uh, tell me quickly I am giving you two point two uh, two unit uh, two minutes. Okay, do you want to do this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, do it and tell me. Who do? Quickly, I will give five points. Or we'll do quickly. I will get, give you five five units more plus. Do we have to find the price? Yes, price is. Tell me your name. Aben Aben, Aben Nezer. 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 The price is uh, hundred. Hundred and quantity. T demanded. Yes, for the equilibrium quantity. How much? It's also 100. Also 100? Yeah. Huda? Yes, the price is 100 and the quantity is 100 as well. As well 100? Yes. Um, I got the price as 66.67 .6 and the quantity as 233.32. Well, we will see Huda and Abenazir says 100 and Natasha says 66 and 200. Let's see. You see, Natasha, you did probably this uh, minus problem. So Abenazir and Huda get five points. Okay. Yeah, the price is hundred and quantity is also hundred. You the got the solution. Huh? You got the solution, Natasha. Now the price is hundred and the. the price is what is it? The price is hundred and the demand is hundred. Yes, yes, I, I, they already, all, all of them, all of them. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I got the answer uh, before also. It is 100 and 100, it's, it's correct. Um, so, do you want me to explain you this or you got it? Hello, sir. Yes. Yatu, Yatu. I can't see anything. Huh? The screen is white. I can't see anything. My screen is white. I can't see anything. I can only see you. Oh, I don't know really, but uh, this is uh, because of the connection problems. It's not, it is sometimes happening to everybody. You quit and come again, probably it will be solved. All right. Is, do, you, do you want me to explain you this uh, solution or is clear? When we are putting these two equations equally, Equal. 500 so, minus, yes, please. Yes. So? Yes, yes, I'm listening. I'm listening you. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, can you please explain his uh, equation? Because I'm coming in late. Uh, I'm using okay. a phone. I'm here to get a laptop here. So sometimes okay. it gives me a problem for me to have okay. access to class. Okay, no problem. We put these two equations into the equilibrium position. 500 minus 4p is equal to minus 100 plus 2p is equal. Okay, we put this equation because we are trying to find the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Therefore, we suppose these two equations should be in equal position for intersect each other, isn't it? Therefore, when we put move this intercept minus 100 to the other side, it will become positive. Therefore, 500 plus 100 is 600. 600, and when you put this minus 4p to the other side of the equation, it will become positive. 2p plus 4p, then it will become 6p. Therefore, 600 divided to 6 will give us the 100 for the 100 yeah. price. Is equilibrium price. Is okay? Up to now? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. It's clear. Okay. Then you are going to put this 100 to the equation, any of this equation, either to the quantity demanded or supply equation. Let's say it is given on the below side of this uh, diagram on this uh, PowerPoint. We put to the demand 500 minus 4 multiplied with 100 is, of course, 500 minus 5, 400 is giving you 100. Or when you are going to put this to the supply, minus 100 plus 2 multiplied 100 is going to give you 200. And minus 100 plus 2 gives you the 100. Therefore, Quantity supplied and quantity demanded again is 100. Therefore, equilibrium price is 100 and equilibrium quantity is 100. Now we have to schedule this. We have to graph this to get better information, to get better knowledge. Um, we are going to intersect again, as I mentioned to you, for finding the intercept points we have here. As you see, when you're going to give you the quantity zero, minus 100 plus 2p is going to be added to the other side is 100 is equal to 2p and when you're going to get the price for the zero quantity is going to give you the 50. Therefore 50 is the quantity which is going to be a starter point or the threshold price.